we are going to start module 2 of chapter 1. In this module, we are interested to discuss the equation of motion of a free particle in relative to rotating earth. In this module, we shall discuss the equation of motion of a free particle. By a free particle, we mean that there is no external forces acting on such particle. In this module, we shall also discuss the motion of a projectile. We know that rotating frame is also known as accelerated frame. We have to know the causes of such acceleration. Different fictitious forces are the two causes of such acceleration. One of such force is Coriolis force. In this module, we shall also discuss the effect of Coriolis force. We shall discuss the motion of a free particle relative to the rotating earth. Please consider this figure 1.3. Let I vector, J vector, K vector be the three unit vectors along the OX, OY and OZ axis respectively. Clearly, the angular velocity omega vector is given by minus omega cos lambda i vector plus omega sin lambda k vector. The acceleration due to gravity g vector is given by minus g into k vector. If r be the position vector of a particle at time t, then r vector is given by x i vector plus y j vector plus z k vector. Thus, the equation of motion of a particle relative to the rotating earth can be written as x double dot i vector plus y double dot j vector plus z double dot k vector plus 2 into determinant i vector j vector k vector minus omega cos lambda 0 omega sin lambda x dot y dot z dot equal to fx i vector plus fy j vector plus fz k vector divided by m minus g into k vector. Here double dot means the second order derivative of x with respect to time t whereas fx, fy, fz are the components of the external force f vector along x axis, y axis and z axis respectively. Equating the coefficients of i vector, j vector, k vector, we have x double dot minus 2 omega y dot sin lambda equal to fx divided by m y double dot plus 2 omega into x dot sin lambda plus z dot cos lambda equal to fy divided by m z double dot minus 2 omega y dot cos lambda equal to fz divided by m minus g. Free particle means f vector equal to 0 vector that is there is no external force. Then the equations of motion of a free particle are given by x double dot minus 2 omega y dot sin lambda equal to 0, y double dot plus 2 omega into x dot sin lambda plus z dot cos lambda equals to 0 z double dot minus 2 omega y dot cos lambda equals to minus g now we consider motion of a projectile let x y z be the position of the particle at time t then the equations of motion are x double dot minus 2 omega y dot sin lambda equal to 0, y double dot plus 2 omega x dot sin lambda plus z dot cos lambda equal to 0,
z double dot minus 2 omega y dot cos lambda equals to minus g if the particle is projected from the height h then the initial conditions are x at the point 0 equal to 0 y at the point 0 equal to 0 and z at the point 0 equal to 0 the initial velocity are given by x dot equal to u0 y dot equal to v0 z dot equal to w0 considered at the origin and at the time of start from this figure one can easily found that from the point 00 h a particle is projected with a velocity u0 v0 w0 the point is on the z axis where the height from the horizon is h integrating the first equation and using the initial condition we get x dot minus 2 omega y sin lambda equal to u0 integrating the third equation and using the initial condition we get z dot minus 2 omega y cos lambda equal to minus g into t plus w0 substituting these two in the second equation and neglecting the term containing omega square we get y double dot plus 2 omega u0 sin lambda plus 2 omega w0 cos lambda minus 2 omega g t cos lambda equal to 0. Integrating and using initial condition we have y dot plus 2 omega u0 t sin lambda plus 2 omega w0 t cos lambda minus omega g t square cos lambda equal to v0. Integrating again and using the initial condition we have y plus omega u0 t square sin lambda plus omega w0 t square cos lambda minus one third omega g t cube cos lambda equal to v0 into t. Substituting the value of y in the expression of x dot and neglecting the term containing omega square we get x dot equal to 2 omega v0 t sin lambda plus u0. Integrating and using the initial condition we have x equal to omega v0 t square sin lambda plus u0 t. Substituting the value of y in the expression of z dot and neglecting the term containing omega square we get z dot equal to 2 omega v0 t cos lambda minus g t plus w0. Integrating and using the initial condition we get z equal to omega v0 t square cos lambda minus g t square by 2 plus w0 t plus h. One can note that if omega equal to 0 then x equal to u0 t, y equal to v0 t and z equal to h minus half g t square plus w0 t. This corresponds to the earlier case where the earth rotation is neglected. Now we consider the effects of Coriolis force. Instead of projection, if the particle is dropped from rest from the height h, then u0 equal to 0 equal to v0 equal to w0. Integrating equation x double dot minus 2 omega y dot sin lambda equal to 0 and using the initial condition we get 
x dot minus 2 omega y sin lambda equal to 0. Integrating z double dot minus 2 omega y dot cos lambda equal to minus g and using initial condition we get z dot minus 2 omega y cos lambda equal to minus g t. Substituting these in y double dot plus 2 omega into x dot sin lambda plus z dot cos lambda equal to 0 and neglecting the term containing omega square we get y double dot minus 2 omega g t cos lambda equal to 0. Integrating and using initial condition we have y dot minus omega g t square cos lambda equal to 0. Integrating again and using the initial condition we have y minus one third omega g t cube cos lambda equal to 0. Substituting the value of y in the expression of x dot and neglecting the term containing omega square we get x dot equal to 0. Integrating and using the initial condition we have x equal to 0. Substituting the value of y in the expression of z dot and neglecting the term containing omega square we get z dot equal to minus g t. Integrating and using the initial condition we get z equal to h minus g t square by 2. If at small t equal to capital T, the particle reaches the horizontal plane z equal to 0, then we have small h equal to half g into capital T square, which gives capital T equal to root over 2 h by g. Then y at t time small t equal to capital T equals to one third omega g capital T cube cos lambda equals to two third omega h into root over two h by g into cos lambda. The positive sign indicates that it lands at a point on the y axis east of the origin. At the pole lambda equal to plus minus pi by 2 and for this deviation y is 0. The earth is rotating from west to east it is known to us. So, this can be easily explained since the particle reaches the point O it has a downward vertical velocity g vector into t and the direction of 2 omega vector cross del del t of r vector which is nothing but the Coriolis acceleration and hence can be treated as Coriolis force is eastward. Due to this Coriolis effect the particle suffers an easterly deviation. Now we shall discuss some solution of problem. Now problem 1, a particle is projected with a velocity capital W vertically upwards from a point O on the earth surface whose latitude is lambda. So that the particle suffers a westernly deviation of amount 4 third W cube divided by g square into omega cos lambda when it returns to the horizontal plane through the point O. To solve this problem let OX is taken as horizontal and pointing south, OY is taken as horizontal and pointing east and OZ is taken as the local vertical. In figure 
you can find OX, OY and OZ. If X, Y, Z is the position of the particle at time t, then the equations of motion of the particle relative to the rotating earth are X double dot minus 2 omega Y dot sin lambda equal to 0, Y double dot plus 2 omega X dot sin lambda plus Z dot cos lambda equal to 0, Z double dot minus 2 omega Y dot cos lambda equal to minus D. The initial conditions are given by x at the origin is given by 0, y at the origin is 0, z at the origin is 0. The initial velocity are given by x dot equal to 0, y dot equal to 0, z dot equal to w at the time of projection. Integrating equation 1, we get x dot equal to 2 omega y sin lambda plus integrating constant. Using the initial condition, we get the integrating constant equal to 0. So, x dot equal to 2 omega y sin lambda. Integrating equation 3, we get z dot equal to 2 omega y cos lambda minus gt plus constant. Using initial condition, we get constant equal to capital W. So, z dot equal to 2 omega y cos lambda minus g t plus w. Substituting in 2 and neglecting omega square, we get y double dot plus 2 omega capital W minus g t into cos lambda equal to 0. Integrating this, we get y dot equal to minus 2 omega into capital W into T minus G T square by 2 into cos lambda plus constant. Using the initial condition, we have constant equal to 0. So, Y dot equal to minus 2 omega into capital W into T minus G T square by 2 into cos lambda. Integrating this again, we have Y equal to minus 2 omega into W T square by 2 minus G T cube divided by 6 into cos lambda plus constant. Using the initial condition, we have constant equal to 0. Therefore, Y equal to minus 2 omega W into T square by 2 minus G into T cube by 6 into cos lambda. Using 5 in equation 4, and neglecting omega square, we get z dot equal to minus g t plus w, which on integration gives z equal to minus g t square by 2 plus w t plus constant. Initial condition gives integrating constant equal to 0. So, z becomes z equal to minus g t square by 2 plus w t. When the particle reaches the horizontal plane, then z equal to 0 at small t equal to capital T say. In that case, we have minus g into capital T square by 2 plus w into capital T equal to 0, which gives capital T equal to 2 into capital W divided by g. At this time, y is given by minus omega by 3 into capital T square into 3 into capital W minus G into capital T into cos lambda equals to minus omega by 3 4 into capital W square by G square into 3 capital W minus 2 capital W into cos lambda which finally gives minus 4 third W cube into omega divided by G square into cos lambda. The negative sign indicates that the particle suffers a westernly deviation of amount 4 third capital W cube into omega divided by G square into cos lambda. Next, problem 2. Here, a projectile is fired at latitude lambda with a velocity capital V0 
directed towards the west at an angle theta with the horizontal. Prove that the time taken to reach the maximum height is given by capital V0 by G into sin theta minus 2 omega capital V0 square divided by G square into cos lambda sin theta into cos theta. Also find the increase in the time of flight. From figure 1.6, you can find the description of this problem. Let us take OX as horizontal pointing south, OY as horizontal pointing east, where OZ as local vertical at O. If P, X, Y, Z be the position of the particle at time t, then the initial conditions are X equal to 0, equal to y, equal to z at the origin, whereas the initial velocity are given by x dot equal to 0, y dot equal to minus capital V0 cos theta, z dot equal to capital V0 sin theta, since the particle is projected from the origin. The equations of motion of the projectile relative to the rotating earth are x double dot minus 2 omega y dot sin lambda equal to 0, y double dot plus 2 omega x dot sin lambda plus z dot cos lambda equal to 0, z double dot minus 2 omega y dot cos lambda equal to minus b. Integrating 1 and using the initial condition we get x dot equal to 2 omega y sin lambda integrating 3 and using the initial condition we get z dot equal to 2 omega y cos lambda minus g t plus capital V 0 sin theta substituting these into and neglecting omega square, we get y double dot plus 2 omega into minus g t cos lambda plus capital V 0 sin theta cos lambda equal to 0. Integrating and using the initial condition, we get y dot plus 2 omega minus g t square by 2 cos lambda plus capital V 0 T sin theta cos lambda equals to minus capital V 0 cos theta. Integrating this again and using the initial condition we have y plus 2 omega into minus g T cube by 6 cos lambda plus capital V 0 T square by 2 sin theta into cos lambda plus capital V 0 into T cos theta equal to 0. Putting this value in the expression of z dot and neglecting the terms containing omega square, we get z dot equal to minus 2 omega capital V 0 T cos lambda into cos theta minus g T plus V 0 sin theta. When the particle reaches the maximum height, then z dot equal to 0 at the time small t equal to capital T says. Therefore, minus 2 omega capital V 0 into capital T cos lambda into cos theta minus g into capital T plus V 0 sin theta equal to 0, which gives capital T equal to capital V 0 sin theta divided by g plus 2 omega capital V 0 cos lambda into cos theta. This can be written as capital V 0 sin theta divided by G into 1 plus 2 omega capital V 0 divided by G cos lambda into cos theta whole to the power minus 1. Expanding this, we can get capital T equal to V 0 sin theta divided by G into 1 minus 2 omega capital V 0 divided by G cos lambda into cos theta. Other terms have been neglected. We finally get capital T equal to 
v0 sin theta divided by g minus 2 omega capital v0 square divided by g square cos lambda into sin theta into cos theta. When omega equal to 0, that is if the earth's rotation is neglected, then capital T equal to capital T dash. Therefore, T dash equal to capital V0 sin theta divided by G. So, the difference between T dash and T is given by T dash minus T equal to 2 omega capital V0 square divided by G square cos lambda sin theta into cos theta. Please remember that T dash is the time of flight when earth's rotation is neglected. T dash minus T gives the increase in the time of flight. In this module, we have discussed the equation of motion of a free particle in a rotating frame. Rotating frame is also known as accelerated frame. Some fictitious forces are the causes of such acceleration. Coriolis force is an example of such fictitious force. In this module, we have discussed the effects of Coriolis force. The motion of projectile has also been discussed.